Uh, I guess you talk uh, a lot about inflation and the recovery, and uh, I don't want to ask the question on that because I know that, especially uh, these days, even the president of ECB doesn't know what the, how the future exactly will look like. Instead, let me go to the topic of our very good technical preparatory meeting that is uh, linked to a review of ECB, ECB uh, uh, framework. Uh, the first question uh, is about the uh, interlinkages between the quantitative easing and the inflation. One can argue that as the staff prediction of inflation goes visibly below the target at the monetary policy horizon, market believes that ECB would not do enough to get inflation back to the target. This is true, obviously, unless you believe that there is quite a limited impact of quantitative easing on the inflation and also other monetary policy measures are not just ready to steer inflation closer to the target. So I would like to ask you to elaborate on that interlinkage of the uh, quantitative easing and inflation and other tools, uh, other tools uh, of monetary policy for this purpose. The second question is closely related because I frankly I believe that uh, these days, there is really a limited ability of the monetary policy to guide inflation closer to the target at a reasonable cost. But as we all know, some people are arguing to replace the inflation targeting with the price level targeting. So I wonder to which extent you believe that moving to price targeting at the circumstances when monetary policy has only limited chance to, to steer the inflation to the target would not result in a substantial increase of volatility of inflation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your, uh, for your two questions. And actually, they remind me that there is one uh, item that I should have mentioned as one of the uh, conclusions of our strategy review, which, is the, which has to do with the tools. Because clearly, in our conclusions, we have listed the various tools that we have available and that are in the toolbox for all circumstances. And what I think is important in the listing that we do of those tools is what I would call their pecking order. And we clearly refer to uh, interest rates as you know, the, the, the primary tool, which in normal circumstances is, is uh, the, the key um, one that is being used. But as we have seen over the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, it is in and of itself not sufficient. And other tools had to be um, explored, developed, and implemented for good, uh, for good, with good effect. And those include, of course, uh, uh, purchase programs of all sorts, um, starting initially with the SMP and continuing with a variety of family members of uh, similar um, purchases. Uh, of course, forward guidance, which has played a, a very important role and which we believe will continue to play a critical role. Um, uh, teltros of all sorts, uh, tiering mechanisms that uh, that uh, go with uh, with all that, and any other tools that will need to be invented if and when necessary in order to deliver on our mandate of the price stability. So, all tools uh, are there. Uh, all have been used over the course of time, sometimes in combination, but we certainly don't. Uh, uh, we will not refrain from using them uh, as, as we see fit and most uh, appropriate and convenient. Now, you asked me more specifically about uh, what you call generically quantitative easing, uh, which is the, the series of purchase programs that have been um, put in place. And I will focus on, on the ones that I've been most familiar with because I've been here for two years. And in those two years, we have indeed uh, used um, purchase programs and one amongst others and certainly with the largest uh, component at the moment which is which is PEP and it's really the question of whether or not PEP has been uh, effective and and has helped in the circumstances and frankly uh, I think it's it's inequivocably yes it has been effective uh, when we look at the purpose we had, which was to maintain favorable financing conditions, uh, together with uh, you know 
making sure that the inflation outlook uh, is satisfactory or at least aims uh, to a satisfactory, uh, towards a satisfactory direction, uh, I think we can conclude that it has been effective. Actually, uh, staff at the ECB uh, attempted to quantify by how much growth has actually increased and inflation has increased relative to what it would have been had it not been for the uh, pandemic emergency purchase programs. And we're talking about over the period of 20 to 23, 1.8% and 1.2% respectively. So I think that, you know, there is no, no doubt uh, that PEP has in fact been effective, both in order to provide those favourable financing conditions that are necessary for the economic uh, actors, be them public, private sector, corporate households, to actually participate in the recovery and obtain financing in, uh, in, in satisfactory conditions, but also inflation outlook, which, as I said, has been uh, uh, improved by a factor of 1.2 percentage point, thanks to the, uh, the, uh, the PEP. Um, when we look at um, Teltros, because that's also another tool that we've used extensively over the last two years, and it, you know, it might not qualify as, as pure quantitative easing, but it is certainly unconventional compared with what was regarded as conventional up until uh, a few years ago. Uh, it has also been extremely efficient, and the take-up by banks of Teltros under the conditions that were set from the, the gate-go as you will benefit from favourable rates relative to the interest rates that were set in particular, uh, the DFR, but only provided that you extend more credit to the economy. And uh, this, is, this is what has happened. Uh, a number of banks have actually delivered and are actually uh, offering uh, financing to the economy in as much volume as they had before pandemic, and for some more so, which justified plainly that they received the uh, favourable interest rates that we provided. Thank, Thank you.